If you recall, I said earlier that a TAM below $5 million is outside the TAM sweet spot. In fact, it's below the low end range. Now, are there exceptions to this? Yes, there are, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. It is possible that initial TAM of less than $5 million could lead to a successful business if you capture the market quickly and convincingly, especially if the gross margin of your product is very high, 90% or more for software, mobile apps, or information-based business models. And if you do not need many employees to dominate your beachhead market, that's another good sign. But with a TAM of, of zero, you not only need to capture this market very quickly and convincingly, um, i.e. dominating the market, but this beachhead also needs to give you a powerful position from which to attack better markets quickly and efficiently. It has to create an asset that's enormously valuable to you that you can monetize in other ways. Let me give you an example of this before we go to time. And I think it's a very compelling one. If you look at the company and the application Pinterest, um, where you pin pictures up, well, this turned into a very valuable company. And how did that happen? Because it's a freemium business model. They're not charging. Isn't the TAM zero? Um, well, in fact, what happened is that their beachhead market was women who were getting married. And they were looking for, at first, you know, wedding dresses, but then other things for their wedding. I mean, what an attractive uh, demographic to be dominating. You can monetize that in many different ways. A lot of people are looking to get access to that demographic. So while that beachhead market was not something they were monetizing directly, it was something that was clearly a strong asset that they could monetize indirectly. Likewise for Amanda and her team at Time. If they can get dominant market share within that beachhead market of business schools, this is a very attractive demographic. It's something that you could then expand out from and people will pay to get access to that demographic and then that demographic will go on into other jobs, including jobs in the enterprises. One of the advantages of focusing in on the MBA market is um, that this is two years when these students and customers are actually on a break from the corporate world. Often they're coming from consulting or finance or other corporate areas and they take a break to go to business school and the likelihood is they're going to go right back into that world, which makes it a very organic lead in to the enterprise space if in fact that's where we one day decide to go. So in these scenarios, uh, while somewhat unusual, a TAM of less than $5 million can turn out to be a very attractive business if you think about it the right way. Every decision you will make as an entrepreneur will have consequences. So if you're going into a beachhead market with a TAM of zero, or another very small TAM, you will need to know why you're doing it and what that means for your company. You can look at creative ways to fund it by getting customers to pay you up front. But in some way, shape, or form, you're going to have to get some money to take care of this negative cash flow until you can get to the point where your beachhead market is successfully conquered and you can move on to one where it will produce real revenues. For time, that means that until they win their beachhead market and begin attacking follow-on markets, they will be cash flow negative. That's not a problem in and of itself. This is a common characteristic of innovation-driven businesses. But what that does mean is that time and other companies that are in an innovation-driven business need to attract cash from investors or other people, customers. And if they attract it from investors, their founders will start to cede control of ownership and control of it will pass over to the investors. That's not necessarily a problem, but just a trade-off that you should know. For our business, our sort of uh, customer acquisition strategy, it's going to be necessary for us to take on investors. But I look, for, I look at investors as an opportunity because uh, people in the investment community who do this professionally, they have a lot more exposure and a lot more experience in what's going on in the market. And I think that they can actually end up being a value add, not just in terms of the money that they bring to us, but also the advice and, uh, and feedback that they can potentially lend us. Some entrepreneurs are comfortable with less ownership and control, while others are not. There's no right answer. You should decide what's right for you. But let me say that if you want to build a great company, it's hard to be in control of it. There's a saying by Noam Wasserman at Harvard and Matt Marks here, you can be in control, you can be king, or you can get rich and have big impact, but it's hard to be a rich king. <laughs>